a comedian, but I also happen to be a writer. I write books for a living. And the cool thing about that is that if this stand-up thing ever doesn't pan out, I always have my fallback plan, drinking myself to death. So, uh, pretty nice job mobility there. Before that, I worked in a bookstore. That's why I'm speaking like I'm better than all of you. Um, it's also why I have the fashion sense of a fifth grade substitute teacher. That's what I look like all the time. I feel like stand-up's a lot like substitute teaching. Like, none of you know who I am. I don't particularly like any of you. And uh, really, we'd rather I pull the screen down and we watch Stand and Deliver for a few hours. That'd be nicer. I'll put our heads down and play Seven Up. This is exhausting. So I worked in this bookstore, a lot of funny things happened. Like one day a woman came in and with no context whatsoever, she said, hi, my husband just left me. Do you have anything to recommend? And I was like, yes. Stop saying that to strangers. That's where I would start. Another time this little girl came into the bookstore, she was like, I just got a visit from the tooth fairy. I was like, oh yeah, what did you get? And this little girl goes, I got ten dollars and a gold necklace. I was like, screw you, you little one percenter. How dare you say that to me? You have no idea how good you have it. You lose a tooth and your body replaces it naturally and you get ten dollars and a piece of jewelry? I'm in my twenties. If I lose a tooth and I want it replaced, I have to move back in with my parents. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I'm from Cleveland originally. <laughs> All right, that was a little hearty of a laugh uh, from you. <laughs> I'm from Cleveland. I always tell people, Cleveland's great if you've never been to Chicago. And what's great about it <laughs> is that we still have the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns, if you don't know, they're the team that gave up on their sport a long time ago. That's their entire M.O. Uh, the reason I know that the Cleveland Browns gave up a while back, maybe from the very start of their franchise is that the logo the Cleveland Browns chose to represent their team is just a football helmet. That's it. <laughs> their theme is football. I think they chose football helmet because they're trying to remind the players what sport they're involved in. <laughs> Other NFL teams, they get a ferocious animal in there. They get a raider or a viking. You know, like their team's basically, their logo's basically saying, hey, our team's gonna come to your town, we're gonna kill you, and then we're gonna burn down your house. <laughs> the Browns logo's basically saying, uh, hey guys, safety first out there, that's, uh, <laughs> and have fun. Uh, I don't watch a lot of sports, because look at me, and, uh, <laughs> the sport I watched the most this year was the Tour de France. Oh, even the nerds don't know what that is. That's nice. The Tour de France, I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but the white guy won. It was pretty impressive. Um, the Tour de France, nobody cares about it. The reason I know that nobody cares about it, the announcers who are paid to announce the Tour de France did not seem to care that the Tour de France was going on. There were two guys in a dead heat for first place at the end of a stage going up a mountain. There's a kilometer left and the announcers cut away to what was going on in a nearby cheese shop. That's real. <laughs> and then they took the time to explain that the town they were cycling through was actually a palindrome. The same forwards as it is backwards. Like, say what you will about American sports announcers. They're redundant, they're kind of stupid, they use words wrong. At least they're not pedantic geeks. <laughs> At least they're not assholes about their knowledge. No, no, you're never watching the Baltimore Ravens and they're like, there's 10 seconds left, this is definitely the last play of the game. They are at fourth and goal. And I just want to remind everyone that the Ravens get their name from an Edgar Allan Poe poem. <laughs> and here to read the poem in its entirety is Sir Ian McKellen. And then they go, so Ian, what play do you think they're going to run? And Ian goes, they shall not pass! <laughs> and it's pronounced Smaug! All right. <laughs> I hope you guys brought your yoga pants to the show, because that one was a bit of a stretch. Uh, that's a long way to go for a Lord of the Rings joke. Uh, I still, speaking of movies, I still have Netflix. 
They still have Netflix? I don't know why I have it. I basically pay 1088 a month to scroll through old movie posters before I pass out at night. That's what I use it for. <laughs> Just 1088 a month, like, oh, I remember 1987. <laughs> you guys remember getting DVDs in the mail before the streaming? How did they stay a business? Nobody cared. Did, did anyone lose a Netflix DVD in here? What happens? You had to, you had to return them. No, I mean, you lose it. They don't have to return them. Do yeah, you, you don't have to do anything. They do nothing. There are no consequences. They just send you another one as soon as you report it. What kind of conscientious cokeheads were working in Netflix? They're all doing lines in a basement like, this guy's gotta have season three of The Wire, now! Send it, send it, send it, send it! <laughs> you ever look at the back of an Netflix envelope? It was always the same thing. It was like, oh, did you lose an envelope? That's okay, take this DVD, put it in with this DVD, send them both back together. Oh, did you lose everything? That's okay. Take a blank disc, fold it, put it in a bottle, throw it in the ocean. We don't give a shit. <laughs> One of our carrier pigeons will get it. <laughs> so I've been dating the same girl for a while. It's the, it's the longest I've ever been dating someone. And uh, like an idiot, I just asked her what we should do for our anniversary. And she said, uh, well, what do you usually do for women you've been dating this long? And I was like, break up? Like, I don't understand. The... And she's like, no, what do you give them? I'm like, I usually do it in an email or a text message. I don't like fighting. A woman came up to me in a bar the other night, and she was like, uh, can I have a drink with you? And I had to say, I'm sorry. I have a girlfriend. And that woman responded, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> That's when I realized, like, oh, women don't want to hang out with me because I look sexy. They want to hang out with me because I look safe. That's, uh, like, in my head, she's going, I wonder how many tattoos this guy's got. And in reality, she's thinking, mm, if he tries anything, I can likely overpower him. This is, uh, he looks like all of my cousins. There's nothing sexual about this. My girlfriend and I were in bed the other night. That's right. We were sleeping. And, uh... This woman above us started vacuuming like right above our heads at 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, sorry, the woman who lives above us. She wasn't a ghost. It wasn't a, she went, there were apartments in New York City and she was like, ah, okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't a ghost. Like, I've unfinished business. I never washed this floor. <laughs> so the woman who lives above us in the apartment above us vacuuming at 7 in the morning, my girlfriend and I wake up pissed. We're like, what is that? And I turn to my girlfriend, I go, hey, I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna deal with this. And my girlfriend, pre-coffee, this fast, comes back with, what are you gonna say? <laughs> because she knows I'm a pussy. <laughs> she knows I'm gonna go upstairs to that woman's apartment, I'm gonna knock on the door, I'm gonna go, hey, sorry to bother you. That's it, just sorry to bother you. Who knocks on a door this early? This is crazy. <laughs> so I turned to her, I was like, no, I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna say, hey, a better time to vacuum, you know, real assertive. And my girlfriend, again, this fast, comes back with, no! She needs to know that her actions have consequences! <laughs> I'm not gonna murder her. <laughs> I'm gonna hit her with our vacuum until she's dead. <laughs> I should really work at Chipotle, because I'm about to do a shitty job wrapping this up. Um, I think that's good. Good night, everybody. I'm Dave Wilber. Dan Wilber, everybody.